Okay, here's what we did in our previous tutorial. We wrote a hibernate.cfg.xml and uh, we configured our database related information over here and we gave the dialect which is again related to our database. Uh, depending on what database uh, we're using, we enter the dialect for that database. And then finally, we had a mapping class in place where we entered the details of our DTO. Then we created the DTO object here and uh, we had a couple of uh, properties. We added getters and setters for that. And then we added a couple of annotations. The first one was entity and this was on top of the class declaration and this denoted that this class is an entity class. And then we had an ID annotation, which was on top of the user ID property field. And uh, this denoted that this user ID is the primary key. Then we wrote a, a class with the main method where we instantiated the user object with uh, some default values. We gave the user ID and the user name with default hardcoded values. And then we used hibernate to save the object by using a session factory, by uh, you know opening the configuration and then building a session factory. Now from the session factory, we opened a new session. We began a transaction, we saved this user object, and then we committed the transaction. So this was what we did. And then what Hibernate did was it created the table and then it saved this object that we had created. So here's the Postgres query tool where I can run queries. Here I'll do a select star from user details and this will give me the record that was inserted earlier which is user ID 1 and the user name which is all fine. Now let's do one thing. Let's um, let's go back to this program and uh, I'll try to insert a second user here. So I'll say 2 user ID 2 and then I'll call this user as second user. That's the username. Save and let's run this. Now what happens if we run this? Okay, it's inserted the record into the user details. Now, interestingly, if we query this, run here, you see two second user. Now what happened to user one? First user has been deleted for some reason. And uh, the reason why that's happening is this configuration here in the XML called HM, HPM to DDL auto is set to create. Now, what does this mean? This means that as it says in the comment here, Hibernate is going to drop and recreate the database schema when it runs for the first time. So when you're starting up here, when you're saying um, you're building a new session factory out of new configuration, then what Hibernate does is it recreates the entire schema. And how does it recreate the schema? It's by reading into all these model objects and uh, looking up the class name and then creating a table out of it, looking up the ID of uh, the properties and creating a primary key out of it and the other properties looking at the name and creating table column names out of it. So this is happening every time you start. Now, again, if I run this, it's going to drop all this, you know, the schema and then recreate the entire schema. The way it helps us, say, for example, you have, uh, you're developing your code and then you want to change a lot of things here in the model and then you're, uh, you want the schema to get created every time you run it, then this is very helpful. You can have a create. But what if I want to retain my data? I want the data that was saved in the previous run to be available when I run again. So the way to do that is to change this from create to update. Now, if I have this HPM to DDL dot auto property set to update, then what Hibernate does is it only makes a change if it finds a change in the model. If it does not find a change, it's not going to create everything from the scratch. It's going to add on to it. Just to test that, we will add user number three and I will call this user as third user. Now, if I run this, the previous user should be still there. So let's run this. Okay, now it's inserted. Let's have a look at the user details table. There you go. Second user is available. Now third user is added. So this update makes sure that your existing schema is still there. It does not recreate the schema. 
and if you do want to recreate the schema you use create here okay now after that there is one more configuration here that uh, we can understand right away which is this one um, the property name is show underscore sql and the value is set to true so this is what is doing this here you know it's printing out the sql query and uh, if you set it to true this will print it out to std out which is our console here and uh, it's printing this value here and uh, if you set it to false it's not going to display that we can leave it as true all the way because uh, again it's helpful when to, you know to see what query hibernate comes up with when we are uh, making changes here okay now this leaves a few other configuration settings here we're gonna not, we're not gonna bother about that as of now we'll learn about those configuration settings as we go so now let me make a couple of changes to this user details to Java. We saw in our previous tutorial that there were a few defaults that Hibernate was taking, uh, you know, in making the table design and in also in inserting values into the table. Uh, the first default was that it was taking this user details name as the table name. It was inserting this into this table it, uh, it had created and the way it created was by looking at the class name and defaulting to the table name. So this presents a problem. Now, instead of user details, what if I had the class name as user? What would happen is Hibernate would try to use the same name in order to create the table. And then when it would do a create table with the name of user, the database would not allow because user is actually a restricted uh, keyword in most of the databases. Uh, however, you can have a class name called user. So this, you know, this is a common problem you might face. Uh, something might not be restricted as far as a class name is concerned, but it might be restricted as far as uh, the table name is concerned. Same thing goes for uh, the field names. You can have some words here which are allowed as far as field names are concerned, but you cannot have them as column names because the database enforces that limitation. How do you deal with that? The way to deal with that is to use some configurations of these annotations. So we'll have a look at some of these configurations in this tutorial. First of all, for entity. Now, entity has a property called name. Uh, I just did a control space and uh, name is the only property that is there for entity. So that it just came up instead of showing me a drop down. Now, what does name do? Now, let me change the name here to at user underscore details. What's happening here is if you pass this name property, then Hibernate will not take this class name into consideration when it's creating a table. It will create the table out of this name. So let's save this and run this one more time. There you go. You see this? Now it's inserted into user details. This is the new table name that it has created. It did not pick up the class name this time because I've given an entity name and the entity name is what gets picked up by Hibernate as the table name itself. Uh, we can of course validate that by looking up at the schema and then doing a refresh. There you go, user details is here. Now note that it does not remove the earlier one because we have set the configuration here to update okay this highlights one other uh, consequence of having an update if we had a create here then what it would have done is it would have dropped the earlier uh, schema so this table would have gone and only this would have remained but now since it's an update it does not modify the existing one it just creates whatever is new so that makes sure that this table gets created but this one is left out as it is. So let's drop this. We don't need this now. Okay, so now we have the user details. Now the same thing, whatever we saw for entity name applies to these column names as well. Now say I want to override a column name. Instead of this username, I want to have user underscore name. In that case, what I would do is I'll go to the top of this um, field and I would say at 
at column. Now, right away, it comes up with the import. Let me import this. Again, I'm importing from Java X dot persistence. Now, at column has a few properties. Again, I do, I do a control space. Now, it has something called as a name. Now, let me set the name here equals user underscore name. I've saved this. Now, what I'm doing is I'm saying that uh, I'm telling Hibernate, don't use this name. Instead, use this name. So it's just an override of the default behavior. It's optional. If you don't specify this, it picks up the field name itself. I can change the user ID also. Um, a user ID field already has an ID annotation, but I can add an additional annotation for column. So I can say column. name equals user ID. So so this is a there's a couple of annotations which are um, operating on this user ID property. Now the first annotation tells that this user ID is a primary key and the second annotation tells what the column name should be. So I can have multiple annotations on the same field. So let me save this. I'm going to change this to uh, create. And uh, it's, I would like it to be, uh, I'd like the schema to be dropped every time because it's, it's helpful when you're making such uh, major changes to the to the database. It might end up in errors in some cases otherwise. So now let me run this again. Java application. Okay, now see it is inserted into the user details table. The username is the name which we have entered here and the user ID Again, it's taken the name of the column as the name that we have entered here in the column annotation. Okay. Before we wind up this tutorial, one other handy trick is uh, regarding the position of the annotations. Here we have positioned our annotations on top of the field itself. Here we have put it on top of this private end. Here we have put the annotation on top of private string. So we have put it on top of the field declaration. Another alternative is to put it put the annotations on top of the getter itself. So let's say I remove this user ID annotation and then I place the annotation on top of the getter. And let's say I take this username annotation and place it on top of the getter of the username. Oops, I think I put it the other way around, yeah. Put this here and then I put this here. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll change the username getter to a different just as a marker to know that the value is coming up from the getter. Now what happens if I run this? It's going to insert fine, but what is the value that's inserted? from getter is the value that's inserted which means that the it means that hibernate picks up the value from the getter instead of the field value so even though the value of the field is just third user it's actually taking the value from the getter which is the actual value plus the from getter string and then it's inserting that into the table so you can have you can have both of these options you can either enter the annotation on top of the field, in which case it picks up the value of the field, or you can have the annotation on top of the getter, in which case it picks up the value from the getter.